Hello and welcome to this lesson on momentum and impulse, which is part of the mechanics topic in AQAA level physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to look at how to define and calculate both momentum and impulse. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we should be able to calculate momentum and impulse, link momentum to Newton's laws of motion, and define and use the conservation of momentum. So we're going to be looking at the following part of the AQA A-Level Physics Specification 3.4.1.6 Momentum. So momentum is how difficult it is for an object to change its motion. So if it is difficult for an object to change its motion, it has a high momentum. If it's easy for an object to change its motion, it has a low momentum. So this means that momentum and inertia are very closely linked to each other. So inertia describes an object's resistance to its change in motion or lack of motion, whilst momentum describes how much motion it has. So momentum is your force or speed of movement, whilst inertia is what keeps you going. So momentum, we can say, represents the amount of motion an object has. It can also be thought of as a measure of the kinetic energy of the object, whilst inertia is a characteristic of an object that resists its change to its state of motion. So objects which are harder to move or whose motion motion is harder to change have more inertia. Now momentum is a vector quantity because it's a product of a vector quantity and a scalar quantity. Now momentum also has both a magnitude and a direction. Its direction is the same as the directions of the object's velocity. So as mentioned before, momentum of an object is dependent on two factors of the object, the mass of the object and the velocity of the object. And we can express this in the form of an equation where momentum is equal to the mass in kilograms times by the velocity in meters per second. Now this is why momentum is similar to kinetic energy. It contains the same terms. So momentum is mass times by velocity and kinetic energy is a half times by mass times by velocity. Now we can even use the equation as the definition of momentum. So we can say that linear momentum is the product of mass and velocity. Now we can symbolize it with the equations P equals M times by V. Now momentum is given the symbol P as it's the first letter of the Latin translation of the word momentum or impetus. Now Isaac Newton realized that a resultant force was needed to change the velocity of an object. And Newton also realized that the effect of the resultant force depended on the object's mass. Now, in the modern day, we know this is Newton's second law of motion, F equals ma. Now, it's better to use the term inertial mass as opposed to mass because the mass is being given by the inertia of the object. Now, Newton decided to simplify the overall system and consider the products of inertial mass and the velocity as the momentum. So this means that for objects with the same momentum, the larger the inertial mass, the lower the velocity, and the smaller the inertial mass, the higher the velocity. Now, we can also also use the equation of momentum to work out its units. So because momentum is equal to mass times by velocity, well then the units of momentum are kilogram meters per second because we have combined the units of mass and the units of velocity as they're being multiplied in the equation. So we can also express it as kgm slash s. Now it's important to note that if an object is not moving, then it has no momentum. Momentum is a dynamic quantity. So every object which is in motion will have a non-zero momentum, but only if an object is not moving, it has a velocity of zero meters per second, will an object have no momentum. Now momentum is also a vector quantity, so the direction of momentum is shown by the sign of the calculated value, plus or minus. So objects moving in opposite directions will have opposite signs. Now momentum can be changed by either altering the speed of the object or the direction which it's traveling in. Now, unless stated in the question that you're given, you can assign which direction is a positive and which direction is a negative. So the equation for momentum, as stated before, is equal to mass times by velocity. Momentum has both magnitude and direction. It is a vector quantity. So if objects are moving in opposite directions, they have opposite momentums, which is signified by one value being a positive and another value being a negative. So this indicates to us that momentum is directly proportional to the mass of the object as long as the velocity is constant, and that momentum is directly proportional to the velocity of an object as long as the mass of the object is constant. Now this allows the laws of motion we've looked at earlier to be written in terms of momentum. 
So Newton's first law, which is that objects either stay at rest or move with a constant velocity unless acted upon by a resultant force, can now be written as a resultant force changes the momentum of an object. Newton's second law, which is that F equals MA, resultant force equals inertial mass times by acceleration, can be written as a resultant force is proportional to the change in momentum every second. And Newton's third law, which is that when two objects interact, they exert equal and opposite forces of the same type of each other, can be written as for a system of objects, the total momentum of the system before equals the total momentum of the system afterwards as long as there's no external forces on the system. That is the conservation of momentum. Now let's look at an example of how we can calculate momentum. So we can say that George Russell is driving in the French Grand Prix. The total mass of Russell in the car is 710 kilograms. He is traveling at a velocity of 120 meters per second. What is his momentum? Well, momentum is equal to mass times by velocity. So it's 710 times by 120, so it's 85,200 kilogram meters per second. Now, as mentioned previously, we've discussed Newton's second law of motion for a constant mass. We've said F equals ma. But we also know that A, acceleration, is equal to the change in velocity over the change in time. So we can substitute it into that equation to get F equals m delta v over delta t. Now we know that a change in momentum, delta p, is equal to delta mv from the previous equation. So now we can write that F equals delta mv over delta t, or the change in momentum over the change in time. So we can therefore say that the resultant force is equal to the rate of change of momentum. Now this equation is very useful in physics because it can predict the motion of an object subjected to forces, even when the mass changes with time, because we've said delta m, so the mass can change in this equation. Now we can also say that the change of momentum delta mv is equal to the final momentum minus the initial momentum or mv minus mu. So therefore we can substitute this into the equation and we can say well f is equal to mv minus mu over t. So we can then take m and factorize that out so we can say m times by v minus u over t. Now we know v minus u over t is just acceleration, so therefore f equals ma. So this shows us that the equation f equals ma is a special case of m of f equals delta mv over delta t, the change in momentum over the change in time, when acceleration is constant. Now we can rearrange this equation to say that f delta t is equal to a delta mv. So now it's important because we can say f delta t in delta mv, the change in momentum and the force times by the change in time is the impulse. Now the impulse is a force applied for a certain time. Now the impulse will cause a change in the momentum for an object. So impulse can be measured in kilogram meters per second or more commonly newton seconds. Now the impulse refers to one object in a collision, so an object can undergo an impulse. Now the larger the impulse on an object, the greater its change in momentum. Now the impulse we can say is the product of the force and the time for which the force acts on the object. So let's have a look at how we can calculate the impulse of an object. So what's the impulse acting on a 900 kilogram car when its velocity changes from 5 meters per second to 30 meters per second? So we know that momentum is equal to mass times by velocity. So you work out your initial momentum by doing 900 times by 5 to get 4,500. You get your final momentum by doing mass times by velocity or 900 times by 30, which is 27,000 kilogram meters per second. So the impulse is the change change in the um in the value here so therefore what it's going to be is you can see it's going to be 22,500 kilogram meters per second Another question says uh, we can calculate we can use this to calculate the force acting on an object when considering its motion. So a train of mass 7,500 kilograms is moving with a momentum of 150,000 kilogram meters per second. The driver applies the brakes for 15 seconds and the train's momentum decreases to 37,500 kilogram meters per second. Calculate the force applied by the brakes. So we know that the force is equal to the change in momentum over the change in time. So we can work out the change in momentum by doing 37,500 minus 150,000. So, and then we divide that by the time, and therefore we get F equals minus 7,500 newtons. The minus sign indicating to us that the force is acting in the opposite direction to the motion.
So to summarise what we've learnt in today's lesson, we've looked at the idea that momentum is equal to mass times by velocity. We've looked at the idea of the conservation of linear momentum and understood that force it can be linked to the rate of change of momentum and that the impulse is equal to the change in momentum. So if we've been successful and we've learnt in today's lesson, we should be able to calculate momentum and impulse, link momentum to Newton's laws of motion and define and use the conservation of momentum. So thank you very much for watching this this lesson on momentum and impulse, which is part of the mechanics topic in AQA A-Level Physics. Thank you very much and have a lovely day.